I have a question for you all. Have you all noticed this writing utensil icon in the top right corner here or this library section in your Google Analytics interface? Welcome, welcome. In this video, we're going to cover customizing your reports. And we're not referring to the Explorer reports or exploration reports, which Google characterizes as advanced techniques that you can use to dig deeper into your data. But we're talking about the reports section of Google Analytics. All these reports here, with the exception of the real-time report. That's the only report that you won't be able to customize. Now, in order to customize these reports, you need to have editor role for whatever property you're using. So if you have access to the Google Analytics for demo account, you'll notice that you don't have these the writing utensil icon in the top right nor the library section in the left navigation. But let's go through how to make sure you have the right access for our GA4 account for this test website that we have set up. So go to the admin section here in the bottom left corner and depending on your GA4 account you can edit the access for the entire account or just for the property. So let's go to the property access management and as you can see you have all the users here and if you click on the three dots to the right you can view each user's account details and for any existing users this is where you can change the role of each user so if you want to elevate any users with a viewer or analyst role to an editor role you can do that here and then make sure you save but I'm not going to change this here so I'm just going to remove or discard the changes and I'll just click out of here and you can also add users with the editor role if you want so let's discard those changes. Now we'll go back to the report section and we'll cover the types of reports that you can customize. You can even customize the structure of your reports. That is the layout of this left navigation here. In the universal analytics version of Google Analytics, the left navigation is static so you can't rearrange these reports or the layout of this left navigation menu but now with Google Analytics 4 you have the flexibility to rearrange reports as you please and you look in your GA4 account or in the demo account you'll notice two types of reports if you click on one of these sections you'll see overview and then these other reports so each section can have one overview report and up to 10 detailed reports these other reports are the detailed reports expand each section or each topic in your left navigation you'll see there's at least there's one overview report for each topic and then a couple detailed reports. The difference between an overview report and a detailed report is the structure or the layout of these reports. So overview reports have scorecards at the top so that you can see these metrics or key metrics, KPIs, key performance indicators at the very top. Since 
it's an overview so you can easily tell how your web properties are performing based on these key performance indicators. So we have these scorecards at the top along with a line chart. Then we have a mix of other charts and tables. So in this example, there's a card here for real time users per minute. And there's also some other bar charts for traffic, a table for traffic categorized by default channel grouping, a geo chart, and some other charts down here along with tables as well. And for detailed reports, let's click on this user acquisition detailed report. So we can take a look at the structure and the layout and how that differs. So with the detailed reports, you'll have two charts at the top. They can be bar charts, line charts, scatter plots, different kinds of charts. And then underneath those, you'll have a table for data that matches the detailed report theme. And we can take a look at an example in the Google demo account, see what that looks like with, with more data, with live data. So here we can see these two charts up top with the various default channel groupings and then this data table here below. So if we go back to our J4 account, We'll take a look at this library section, which is a hub for your collections and reports. Collections being a set of reports. And you can see that the areas on this page are marked out clearly with collections at the top, followed by reports. And you'll notice that the collections matches what you see in the left navigation here. So lifecycle here and user collections are the same as what you see in the left navigation. And then the topics under each collection also match. So under lifecycle you have acquisition, engagement, monetization, and retention. And that's exactly what we see in this area right here under lifecycle. Same with user. You can edit the collection by creating topics or editing topics. As you can move detail reports and overview reports into various topics here. You can rearrange the order of the reports that are already categorized in these topics here. You can also create a new topic. So let's do that and name it conversions. We have monetization here, but we don't have a topic for conversions. So click on apply and let's utilize the search bar to search for any conversion reports. And it looks like we have one under detail reports. So let's drag it over to the conversions topic. And let's see what we have in overview reports. It looks like there isn't any for overview reports, so we'll have to create that. But we can drag another overview report under a topic on the left here. And if there is a, an existing overview report and you try to drag a, another overview report into that topic, you'll see that it only highlights the overview report in the topic. So that indicates that you can only replace the existing 
overview report with another overview report. So you can't add an additional overview report to a topic. So let's just save this and we'll save changes to the current collection. Now you could also save it as a new collection and it'll show up under the collections section on this page. You can create a new collection by clicking on this area here and you have the option to create a new collection using a blank slate which will just bring you to a similar screen that we saw when we tried to edit the collection. So you can just create new topics and fill in the reports that way. You can also use some of the templates that they have available. They have a Firebase if you have an app that you're tracking. They have a collection for games reporting, the lifecycle and user which are available out of the box and then a collection for Search Console if you have Search Console integrated into GA4. Now we can go down to the report section. So these are the existing reports and you can see what kind of template if it is using a template you can see the collection in which it's categorized as well as any description and each of these reports here have options if you scroll or if you move your cursor over to the right you can see these three dots and it gives you options to edit, make a copy, rename or set as report snapshot if the report is an overview report. If it's a detailed report, you won't have that option. Instead, you'll just have these three options or these four options. So you can edit any of these reports from this page, this library page here. You can actually use any overview report that you create or customize as your reports snapshot or you can customize the report snapshot itself. As you can see, there's the, the writing utensil icon available so you can customize this report directly. Before we move on, each property can have up to 200 reports. So you have quite a bit to work with. Now, let's cover customizing an overview report. So that can be either the report snapshot an acquisition overview report, any other overview report in each of these topics, or you can create your own overview report. But let's use this acquisition overview report first to edit this customization. So let's click on the writing utensil in the top right corner here, and we can see this configuration page load. So we have the main report area here and then on the right we have the customized report section and you'll notice that it has a section for cards and a section for report template. So these are the cards that are currently in the report and you can add more cards but if you want to add cards, you have to either choose from this gallery here that's available. So we have these summary cards as well as other cards that aren't grouped to a specific collection. So if we go back to our summary cards and collapse these areas, we can see that there are two collections, lifecycle and one for user and this matches 
what's in our J4 reporting interface. And if we take a look at the demo account, it's the same as you can see these reporting areas here. There's the lifecycle and user. It's the same as what you would have out of the box. If you want to create, if you want to customize another card, you'll have to do this in the detailed report customization. So when you're customizing a detailed report, that's where you can create another card and you can use that card in a overview report. So let's add a card to this overview report. Now you can browse through all the cards that are available, but there's quite a bit here in the summary cards or in the other cards. But you can also use the search bar up here and type in what you're looking for. And for each of the cards, you'll notice that some have a drop down. So if you click on this drop down, you can see what's available for the specific cards. So some of them don't have the drop down. For example, this event count by name, but if you keep scrolling down, you can see drop downs for different metrics or different dimensions. Now what we're going to do is use the search bar and look for cards that give us data on devices. Let's use this table here and change the metric to new users because this is an acquisition overview report so we're just looking for data on new users and we'll check that and you'll notice an indicator at the top here that tells you how many cards you can select so we'll click on add a cart in the top right here and if we scroll down we can see our new users card by platform device category. And you can actually use the drop downs that are available in each of these cards if you want to change the metric or change the dimension here. So there's our card. You can rearrange the, the cards if you like. So, for example, if I want to move this card, I can just click on these dots next to the card and drag it to wherever I want to place it. And it updates instantaneously. And then there's this report template section, and it shows you what report template this overview report is linked to. So right now it's linked to the acquisition overview and what that means is not only is it based on the acquisition overview template but if Google updates the acquisition overview report it'll receive that is this specific overview report that we're customizing will receive any updates that Google makes to the template. So for example, if, if Google adds a dimension to this template, then this report will also receive that update. You can also unlink it, but if you unlink it and save it, then you won't be able to relink it. So let's go ahead and save our report, save changes to the current report or save it as a new report and we're going to choose save changes to the current report so it says that saving changes updates the report in these collections and any updates will be published to all users so we'll click on save and all users will be able to see the changes that we just made to this report. So we'll click on back 
and we'll be able to see the changes that we just made. So there's our new card for new users. You can also create a new overview report in the library section. So if you click on library from the left navigation, scroll down to the reports section, and there are a number of things that you can do here. So first of all, here's the report, the acquisition overview that we just modified. So you can either modify or you can edit any overview reports here, as well as detail reports. Or you can make a copy or create a new report and it'll just bring you to the same report configuration screen that we saw earlier where you can add your cards. Now let's talk about customizing detailed reports. So there are a couple ways that you can do this. If you're in the library page, you can create a new report and choose to create a detailed report from which you can also create from a blank slate or use a template. And you have four templates here, user acquisition, traffic acquisition, events, and conversions. You can also edit an existing detail report by clicking on the three dots, or you can make a copy and Finally, if you navigate to a detailed report from the left navigation, you can also click on the writing utensil in the upper right corner. And that will bring you to this configuration screen. If you're creating a brand new blank report, then none of this data, none of these charts would be here. But the report builder for detailed reports has four sections. The first section is the report data. There's the dimensions and metrics. If you click on the dimensions, it provides you with the list of dimensions included in the report and indicates the default dimension. You can set various dimensions as the default and you can rearrange the dimensions or you can add a new dimension to this report. If we go back, we'll take a look at the metrics. You can also add or remove metrics you can rearrange them as well and you can indicate which metric you want to sort the report by. So right now the charts are showing new users and the data table down here is sorted by new users in descending order and that's what this down arrow indicates. So we can also sort by a different metric. So if we click on engage sessions and click on apply, we'll see that the chart changes. We can see that organic social has more engaged sessions than organic search. Whereas previously we saw that there were the same number of new users from each default channel grouping. The line chart here changed and we can see that our data table is now sorted by engaged sessions in descending order. So we'll go back and reset this to new users and now everything's back to the way it was. The second section is 
charts. So right now we have the bar chart on the left and the line chart on the right. You can toggle whether you want these charts to be visible and you can also change the type of chart between these three options and you can also rearrange the order. The third section is the report template and this indicates which template this report is linked to. The fourth section is the summary cards and these are the cards that you can add to your overview reports. The way this functions is exactly how it's described with the title. These cards act or they serve as a summary for this entire report. So you'll notice there are two cards right now and the first one has a bar chart icon and the second one has a similar icon but this is actually a table bar chart. It's a table similar to what's displayed here but it also has an indicator for the metric for new users. And I'll show you what this looks like in a moment. So these summary cards you can edit or delete them or you can create a new card. So if we go to edit this first summary card we can see the dimensions here that can be used for the drop down in your overview report. You can add more dimensions and this is from the list of dimensions in the report builder on the previous screen. You can add more metrics and these are from the metrics also the ones that you picked in your report data section of this report builder from the previous screen. So you'll notice in this card preview that there is a drop down that contains all of these dimensions listed here as options. So these will only be available for the overview report. As you can see in this report, you don't have the option to select a drop down. Actually, if we go to the report, the actual reporting section, here we are in the user acquisition detail report, and there's no option for us to select a drop down for either of these. If we go to edit the second summary card, we can see that it's a table and these blue lines that indicate the values for this new user metric. You can add another metric, but it looks like there are some rendering issues here. But if you recall from our metrics list, there's a metric for engaged sessions. So if we change the drop down here from new users to engaged sessions, the blue line bar charts change here. So you can see organic social has 10. So it, the line is longer than the line for organic search which only has two engaged sessions. So let's switch this back or we can just remove this and we'll keep the visualization as it is but you also have the option to switch it. And in the actual card when it's in the overview report you'll have a link to the report template that it's linked to. So we'll 
exit out of that and let's create a new summary card here so we'll click on create add a new dimension we'll choose first time user default channel grouping add metrics for new users engagement rate and conversions and for our visualization we'll choose the pie chart so it's different from the other cards so in this drop down for metrics you can choose these options that we selected on the left here and to save this card we'll click on apply so now we have these three summary cards for this report click on save you can save changes to current report or save it as a new report and we'll save as a new report just as an example here we'll choose the name for the report to be copy of user acquisition eventually if you want to replace the existing user acquisition detail report you can change the names so that it looks clean in the GA4 reporting but we'll just save it for now and we'll go back it'll bring up this message but you can discard this because if you notice in the background it's cleared all the summary cards that we had indicating that it's actually a copy that's being shown here so you can discard the changes and we'll see in the main library page that our report has been saved as it'll appear in the list of reports here so there's our report thanks for watching this video on customizing reports in Google Analytics 4 if that was helpful give this video a thumbs up and if you want to learn more about measuring user behavior and improving digital experiences subscribe to the channel and check out the website in the description we'll see you in the next episode